Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today, I am going to recap and explain the second episode from the Wheel of Time series. The episode 2 starts in the habitat of White Clocks. These were the group of men who used to hate the One Power, Aes Sedai, and the Dark One. Apparently, they considered themselves to be the good guys and the true children of light. In the beginning, we see a questioner Aemon Valda whose main task is to hunt down the Aes Sedai's. He had captured a sister from the yellow Aes Sedai who was standing on a pyre. He tucks her ring in his collection. While enjoying the scene, he eats the delicacy Ortolan. Obviously, it is implied that this guy is pure evil and this tribe is seriously dangerous. In the fight against the Dark One, both Aes Sedai and the White Cloaks consider themselves to be the good ones. Only difference is that they don't agree with each other on that, but both agree that the Dark One the evil. Lon, Moraine and the rest were traveling for more than a day. Trollocs were following them. Late at night these guys arrived at the shore of the Toron River. Moraine gave lots of money to a fairy master and really insisted that they must be crossed right away right now. The fairy master wanted to wait for his son, but Moraine was insistent. Hence, the fairy master boarded all of them on his ferry. When they were in the middle of the river, they saw the Trollocs army arriving at the shore. They were screaming and shouting as they feared the deep water and they can't swim. Here we see that hooded man riding his horse again who was actually a faceless thing called Fade. He was the servant of the Dark One who screamed with all his hideous teeth. LOL. The fairy master was scared as he feared for his son, who would be killed upon arriving there. Upon reaching the other shore, he immediately started going back, but Moraine stopped him. She with her power moved the fairy into the middle of the river and started shrinking it. The fairy master begged her to stop, but Moraine didn't listen. He jumped into the water to save his son, but unfortunately he drowned with the fairy. Before dying, he blamed Moraine and agreed with the white cloaks of Ice Sedai's being the bad witch. Even though she was just doing what was logical, if she had allowed that fairy to go back to the other shore, then the Trollocs would have come to the other end and followed them. Rand and others were shocked seeing this, yet they continued their journey. The next evening all these guys stopped for rest. They started doubting Moraine, they were not sure about her after what she did with that fairy man. But Egwene started to believe in her, she says, I saw one of those Trollocs up close, they took Nynaeve alive. Here these guys also discussed the legend of the dragon. According to one theory, in this age the dragon will save the world, but according to another, the dragon will once again destroy the world. So there were conflicting opinions. Now Moraine ended their discussion and ordered them to get some rest so that they can travel the next day. At night when everyone was sleeping, she awakened Egwene and took her to one place alone. Egwene thought she might kill her like that fairy man. Hence she confronted her. Moraine says, all Aei Sedai's are bonded by three laws. They can't break these laws even if they want. The first one is they can't lie. Second, they can't create a weapon that can kill someone, and the third one is they can't use the one power to kill someone. They can use the power only under three conditions, one to save themselves from danger. Second, to save the life of one's warder from the danger and third. To save the life of fellow sister Aes Sedai. Hence, I didn't kill that man, he died in his grief. I woke you to test the power inside you. She gave her pendant to Egwene and asked her to concentrate on it. She wanted to check her ability to channel the one power. When Egwene did it, she indeed felt it and channeled the power to some extent, it implied that she had the potential of becoming another Aes Sedai hence, Moraine continued and said, your ability to listen to the wind is nothing but the one power. Many people call it by a different name, but it's the same. Later Egwene tried to sleep beside Rand, who was not in a good mood, hence he told her that he wanted to be alone. Perrin got injured in his leg while fighting Trollocs in the village. Later that night we see Rand getting up as he was choking. He removed something from his mouth which turned out to be a dead bat. At the same time, a dark entity with glowing guys was standing in front of him, which made him scared like hell. Fortunately, all this was his dream. Apparently, everyone got the same dream. There were many dead bats all around. Moraine warned all of them as the Dark One used to haunt people in their dreams, asked them to tell her if anything like this happens again. Rand was spooked by all this, he had lost it completely. He angrily asked Moraine where the hell she was taking them. She replied as East, the White Tower. Rand was not sure what she and her fellow Aes Sedai's would do to them when they reached the White Tower. Egwene had the potential of Aes Sedai, so her life was relatively safe. 
But these three guys were seriously spooked. Rand refused to go further, Matt and Perrin convinced him. Matt says. We don't have any option, the lady is powerful, she will force us one way or the other. We are dead if we stay here, and what will happen to us when we reach the White Tower is debatable. So my bet is on the lady. The guy who always lost the bet was giving the advice. LOL. Anyway, these guys move forward. After traveling some distance, Lon informed Moiraine that the White Cloaks were here. Moiraine gave her ring to him and asked everyone to keep silence. When the White Clothes arrived, she told them that she was coming from a nearby town and traveling to meet her sister. Here we see the questioner from the first scene who started to searching Moiraine from top to bottom. She showed him her injury and said it was from a monster. He was eight feet tall, he rampaged our village and killed many people. We are fleeing from them. The old white cloak guy was convinced with her explanation, and but Eamon Valda was not convinced. So he took a small group of white cloaks and continued his journey to the south, while the rest went to the west. Here Moiraine saw seven rings on him which implied that he had killed seven Aes Sedai till now. She could have easily killed all these guys, but her laws were not broken. As these guys were continuing their travel, Matt started singing the song of Manetherin. It was an ancient song from the old age, these guys didn't know its true meaning. Their parents, their parents and their parents were singing this song for generations as this was an anthem sort of song. Here Moraine narrates the meaning and history of Manetherin. In an ancient age Manetherin was a city which stood at the present day two river districts. During the Trollock War it stood alone against them. Their king Amian was fighting with rigor, he was promised help from the neighboring city of Aridhal. They were supposed to hold the fight for three days, but they held it for ten days. Amian's wife, Queen Eldreen, took some women and children as refuge in a mountain nearby. On day 13, after Amian's death, she channeled the most powerful one power ever. Which killed every Trolloc and ended the war in victory. Unfortunately, she died as well. The entire Manetheran city got wiped out. But a few of their children survived and lived long, that's why this is a sad song. It depicts the heroism of people of Manetheran. Everyone was surprised by this backstory as this was long forgotten, only the song remained. These people camp near an ancient ruined city. When Parian was checking his infected wound, a pack of wolves appeared in front of him. He was scared, he thought they would eat him alive. But he was still in guilt of Layla, hence he didn't run. One wolf came near him, licked his wound and went ahead. Parian was confused. At night, Morian was unconscious, the infection was spreading very fast. When everyone was sleeping, Trollocs and Fade attacked them. Egwene woke up in a hurry and all started running from there, on their horses. They reached near the entrance of an ancient city when their horses suddenly stopped. They started making noise as if they were scared by something. Trollocs also stopped following them. Egwene was confused, she couldn't understand what was happening. Still Lon forced these guys, they went ahead and entered this ancient ruined city. There was no one in this city, not even insects or animals. The city was called Shadar Logoth, meaning shadows waiting. In an ancient time people from this city promised help to Manetherin. But they never came for help, they betrayed. When the survivors from Manetherin arrived here for food and shelter, they found everyone was gone. For their betrayal the evil consumed them from within. Not a single soul survived. It is said that this place is haunted, shadows here haunt and kill. This place was so evil even Trollocs feared to enter here. Lon warned everyone not to touch anything here. Later Matt heard some whispering voice coming from a distant place. In his curiosity he followed it, and, upon reaching there, he found a box which had a dagger with a ruby stone in it. Being a good thief, he was always curious about gold artifacts, so he picked it up. This was the cursed dagger which used to bring evil on anyone who touches it. Similar to the Horcruex in the Harry Potter series. As soon as he picked it up, the whole place got activated, shadows started moving. Whenever the shadow touched someone, they would be reduced to ashes instantaneously. The horses started making noise as one of the horses got reduced to ashes right in front of Egwene and Ran's eyes. Everybody panicked, Lon picked Moiraine and started running. In this confusion everybody got separated, Parian and Egwene were in one direction, Rand and Matt in one direction, Lon and Moiraine in another direction. Shadows started following them. Parian and Egwene jumped from the roof of the castle into the nearby river and came out alive. Rand and Matt made their way through a narrow tunnel and somehow survived. 
Lon made his way through the city with Moraine and ended up in the jungle. Suddenly, someone placed a sword on his head. It was Nynaeve, she was alive. With this episode too, Shadow's waiting ends. So in this episode we came to know about the backstory of Two Rivers and the Shadow City. It was full of action. Soon I will recap episode 3. Thanks for watching. Take care.